Okay, here we go. You're cleared to hold 20 miles south of Black Forest VOR at flight level 240. Right turns on the 180 degree radial. Expect further clearance at 2155 Zulu and contact approach on 124.3. Well, that's a mouthful and there's convective weather ahead as well. Are you ready for the hold? Neil Singer has some great advice on how to program your flight management system that you might just find really helpful. Let's meet him in the cockpit. Neil? We don't often receive ATC clearances that require us to create a user waypoint, but because of this infrequency, it can be pretty confusing when we do. Let's imagine we're flying to Martha's Vineyard and ATC has cleared us direct to the Martha's Vineyard VOR 359 radial 35 DME. This isn't a published fix, so we're going to have to create one. We'll go ahead and insert this user waypoint. We can call it whatever we want, but let's name it something that makes sense to us, like MVY 359. This system is going to say, this doesn't exist. Would you like to create it? We're going to say yes. We know the radial and the distance from our reference waypoint. Once we enter these, reference of Martha's Vineyard VOR, 359 radial, 35 DME. We create this waypoint and it is inserted into the flight plan at the appropriate point. It also tells us a shorthand for what reference was used when we created the waypoint in case we forgot later. Let's imagine ATC has cleared us to join the Harrisburg 039 radial to intercept Victor 106. Unfortunately, where those two radials intercept, there's no named intersection. We're going to have to create a user waypoint. When dealing with a complex user waypoint like this, sometimes it helps to start with what we know. We know that we're going to be navigating from the Harrisburg VOR, so we can put that in first as an anchor point. We're going to actually be picking up a line in space that lies between the Harrisburg VOR and the point that defines the intersection of the Harrisburg 039 and Victor 106. Again, when we create a user waypoint, we can call it whatever we want, but I like to name it something that makes sense. So let's call it Harrisburg 039. Again, we're going to say we do want to create this, but in this case, we don't know a radial and a distance, but we do know two radials from two reference waypoints. The first is self-explanatory. The second requires us to look at our low altitude en route chart. Victor 106 is defined as the 075 radial from Sierra Echo Golf VOR. So that's our second reference point. We now have a user waypoint defined by the intersection of the HAR039 and the SEG075. By creating this waypoint, we have created a course from the Harrisburg VOR on the 039 radial that will then intercept Victor 106. We can enter a point on the airway, perhaps bless, and from there, build our airway as normal. Now with the leg from HAR to the HAR039 user waypoint activated, we have activated the 039 radial for the intercept and the unit will navigate on the ATC clearance without further action. It's a good idea when you're setting your takeoff speeds to enter but not display VREF and V approach to serve as a reference should an emergency return need to be made right after takeoff. When you do this, it's going to default to turning the speeds on. So you may want to enter these speeds and turn them off before you set your takeoff speeds, just so you don't have to repost your takeoff speeds. It's also a good idea to set your acceleration altitude as a reminder should you lose an engine on takeoff. We do that from utilities and minimums. So for example, if we have a thousand foot level off departing from a 150 foot elevation airport, we could set 1,100 
and 50 feet. We'll now have the barrel minimums bug displayed. This will help cue us, should we lose the engine on departure, that it's time to accelerate and clean up the airplane. There are a few aids to situational awareness during a circling approach the G3000 can display. First, in our map settings, under Other, it's a good idea to make sure your track vector is turned on with a maximum display of 60 seconds. Over 60 seconds and the display will not show a curved path. It's also a good idea under Aviation to have your runway extensions turned on and make sure that they're displaying at five nautical mile or greater zoom. They will make executing the turn to final a lot simpler. If the track vector passes through the runway extension of the landing runway, an overshoot will occur unless the turn radius is tightened up. We also should set the map range to 2.5 nautical miles as we approach the airport. This is displayed on this circle surrounding the airport when we're in north up. This 2.5 miles is a bit smaller than the protected area of circling for a Category C aircraft, such as most Citation, using expanded terps, but it will ensure that if we keep any part of the landing airport comfortably inside the circle, we know we're in protected airspace. Great advice, Neil. Watching our video series will help prepare you for your next flight. You can go to our safety page at citationjetpilots.com and see more than two dozen videos like this. Thank you for watching and fly safe.